What's up everybody? Couch Mills here coming at you with a brand new Valorant video and in this video we got to talk about the brand new patch 3.07 tier list. So if you need to know exactly what characters you can dominate with this patch, this is the video for you. But go to the Game Leap website if you want in-depth tips and tricks and VAR reviews over how to master each and every one of them. We got tons and tons of content, so go check it out right now. But without further ado, let's jump into the video. Now, we haven't had any major events since Masters Berlin, and you got to remember that this was two patches behind the current patch as of now. So we don't have a great pro benchmark about what characters are going to be played, but we can infer exactly where characters are going to move based on what characters have been touched recently now we're gonna skip over the f tier and start off with the d tier because there's no character that's quite f tier bad honestly the difference in power level between the characters are pretty close together and there's not a character that is just so bad that you should absolutely never play them or there's no positives to them so there's no f tier currently but the d tier has three different characters we have brim we have yoru and we have breach now yoru's probably the bottom of d tier if i'm being honest he can be really good in the right hands but he's definitely a character that is very poor when compared directly to a lot of his duelist counterparts. Now, if you're an absolute god with him and you really have mastered the way to make Yoru work, there's certainly ways to abuse the character to get a lot of free kills and value. But overall, the character is not in the best of states and we know that a rework is coming down the pipeline. At some point, I wished it was in this patch, but I'm sure it will be in the next one. I hope so. So we'll have to wait and see on that one. Now, Brim is also in the D tier, which is an interesting interesting one because there's nothing really bad about Brim I mean sure he has a stem beacon it's not absolutely great but Brimstone does the job a lot of the time and he can be a fine character one of the biggest problems with Brimstone is that he just is very weak compared to a lot of the other controller counterparts there's another controller in the C tier that really is a very good character but is in the C tier and Brim is just lacking in power level even compared to that so when you think about all the other options Brim kind of lacks I think Brim is really a character character more for filling if you are not a controller main and you don't really know how to play all the other controllers brim is the easiest one for you to play and you can still get that job done you need someone to smoke heaven you got someone to smoke heaven right and then last up is breach which is a character that sees astronomically low amount of pick rate even with the coordination that benefits the character of pro play so really breach is not a character that i think is the right power level for your average ranked game unfortunately now, of course, you can become an absolute god, someone like Nosy, and definitely get tons of value, and you can combo off with other duelist characters, someone like Jet, and get some free value and free picks, and I think that's a really great way to use Breach if you want to use him, really try to find a dual partner and coordinate certain aggressive pushes but all in all i do also think that there's better initiators for sure there's two very powerful initiators you could play instead and definitely a lot of duelists that do very powerful flash things that you i would rather play instead of breach every single day of the week now next up we do got to talk about the c tier two characters in c tier we have phoenix and omen now these characters are kind of interesting because they're not bad in fact they're still very powerful it just feels like the power scaling of everything else has gone up and these characters have kind of just got left behind like omen is a very very great character i do think maybe his paranoia could be a little bit cheaper or maybe it couldn't flash his teammates that would be a nice quality of life buff but he's really not a bad character he's a very very strong character but when you compare him directly to ash Astro, spoiler alert, he doesn't look that great if an Astro is being played perfectly well because of how much extra utility she has in addition to doing the primary smoke job. So, well, I wouldn't fault you for playing Omen, and Omen's still a very capable character. He is only going to be in the C tier as just a decent option, nothing overpowered and nothing dominant in the meta. And then Phoenix is a character that, when compared to a lot of his duelist counterparts, he's just lacking a little bit behind. I mean, you think about the impact level, a Reyna or a jet can have over the course of a game and while phoenix can definitely do some of that his flashes are somewhat subpar his overall kit doesn't give him that mobility to kind of get out of danger and take multiple fights he's definitely a decent character and something that you can main to climb but he is not meta defining by any means now next up we got to talk about b tier characters characters that have a solidified place in the meta even if they don't define the meta themselves and we have cypher killjoy ko and reyna now, first up, let's talk about Cypher. Cypher is a very great character on certain maps in particular where you can get value out of holding down a site. There are going to be some maps where he doesn't really shine all that much. Really wide open maps where Killjoy is going to be far better. But when you're talking about a lot of the tight corridors and cubbies and even a new map like Fracture, 
Cypher can get a lot of freaking value, and you can really set up these easy retakes with a lot of your high up camera spots. Now, all in all, I do think that he's a really great pick, but of course, he's not going to be overpowered by any means, and there are going to be some maps where he's not the greatest, so I don't necessarily think you could one trick Cypher, even if he is your primary agent. Now, Killjoy, of course, is really great. Similar reasons to Cypher. One of the biggest pluses to a character like Killjoy over Cypher is the fact that she has that retake ability with her ultimate. One of the best ultimates in the game if not the best ultimate in the game as long as it doesn't get destroyed and you're not set up in a position where you could get easily pushed you're going to be able to retake site for free with all the advantages being able to easily pressure out that spike and really get to leverage that to often clutch up around i do think that killjoy is phenomenal on a ton of different maps in fact you should probably be playing her on those maps every single time maps like haven maps like ascent but definitely a character that every single sentinel player should have in their repertoire now, next up, we do got to talk about KO, a character that has moved up quite a bit. It's kind of unclear exactly his impact is going to be in pro play at this point, but I do think that he is of a much higher power level than his previous, like, 2% pick rate in pro play. The new flashes are phenomenal, and good KO players are being able to leverage these flashes to get kills in a very similar way to a duelist, and KO is kind of playing that duelist initiator hybrid, where you can play much like a duelist and get kills and peak angles like a duelist with your pop flashes, but you still have that knife to gather information which is very, very good. I do think that KO is in a pretty healthy spot right now, and he's looking a little bit better than some of the other options in the Initiator category, Breach, and in the Duelist category, Phoenix. Now, last up, we do got to talk about Reyna, a character that in ranked play can be the best character ever or just someone that feeds over and over again but it's undoubtable Reyna's impact in both ranked and pro play Reyna is a character that directly can convert a lot of your skill your mechanical skill into value on the table and has the capability of no other to like 1v5 potentially i think that Reyna is a phenomenal character if you're feeling it but it could definitely be sink or swim picking this character and also you might not even be able to pick this character because everyone's auto locking it so you probably are going to want to have some other duelists that you main if you want to be a duelist main not just a Reyna one trick now next up we do got to talk about the a tier characters that are very powerful meta defining c often play in pro play and ranked play alike and characters that you would definitely be good or well off maining these characters. First off, we got to talk about Raze, next up Sage, and last up Sky. Now, Raze is a very great duelist because she operates on a different axis than specifically Jet and Reyna. Those characters thrive on being able to peek off angles and get out safely, which is something that is nearly unparalleled. I mean, it's very powerful, but Raze gets to play on a fundamentally different axis, being able to throw grenades, being able to break down walls, clear sights with her boom bot, and she also has mobility, an ultimate that can almost guarantee you a pick every single time. There's a lot to love about the way that Raze fights. She really interacts very favorably with a lot of characters like Cypher, Killjoy, Sage, and even characters like Astra. She's pretty good against overall. I think that a lot of people really want to main the Jets and the Reynas, but the Raises, a really good Raise can just completely hard carry. And yeah, it takes a lot of knowledge and learning a lot of these bounces and lineups and how to bounce the grenade to land exactly what you want to and things like that. But when you put in all that work, Raze is a duelist unlike anything else. Next up, we do got to talk about Sage. Sage is just a very consistently great pick in pro and ranked play. One of the highest win rates in ranked and in pro play, she sees a very healthy amount. Now, Sage is going to be great on some maps, but she can get guaranteed wall value, slow value. But all in all, her ultimate is top tier. Being able to heal herself and others is top tier. There's so many good aspects about her kit that a lot of the EU teams are trying to find places to play Sage when other teams are not. And Sage can see up to like a giant amount of S tier play depending on the pro team. So I do think that this is a great character that every single team needs a god tier Sage. But definitely don't use playing Sage as a crutch. Don't think it's okay to just bottom frag every single game because you're Sage. You can definitely rack up the kills. You can definitely be consistent. And if people rush you, you have a lot of the tools to delay them, play for potential picks, or kite back and play retake with your team. Now, last up, we do got to talk about Sky. Sky did receive that buff as of last patch, which prevented her from being like the full on god duelist plus initiator combo. Now, she's a little bit more of just an initiator. Even if you still can peek off your flashes, it's a little bit more difficult than it was before. I think Sky is in a much healthy spot right now because she was already past like ST. She was very, very strong 
looking to be one of the most powerful characters in the game and now she's just very good she's meta defining but she's not like overpowered and i do think that things are looking pretty stable for her here in a tier she's probably going to be here for a while now we do have a pretty stacked s tier with four different agents first off we got to talk about the god himself probably the best character in the entire game and it's sova sova is still god tier and he's only getting better and better as people are learning more and more lineups and getting better at the agent overall i think that he's a really good character to have as the best in the game considering how much knowledge you have to put into the character but ultimately besides split so was phenomenal i mean he's not great on split you could definitely make him work but he really doesn't play to that map that well compared to others and he's ultimately one of those characters that plays really well against characters like viper for instance allows you to get a lot of information allows you to retake a site Playing a Sova and a Viper together allows you to basically retake any site if your Viper sandbags her wall. So really, he's a very great character. He can help enable duelists. He can help enable retakes. He's great with Viper and against Viper. There's just a lot to love about this character that make him just the best character in the game. Next up, we do got to talk about Jet. Jet's a character that did receive a pretty hefty nerf when she no longer get korean jet you don't get that reset with those knives and we were thinking that that was gonna hurt jet mains a lot more than it did it didn't really hurt jet mains all that much a lot of great jets it didn't affect them at all and jet still does what jet freaking does it's still great on eco still has the capability of turning rounds where you were gonna lose on paper by just getting that one kill with that right click and then just getting an upgrade on the gun you don't necessarily need to be super greedy and just be able to kill person after person after person you just get that first kill you get that gun and now around where your team saved you might win up against a full team with weapons jet of course from those medium to long ranges you could still get those left clicks in very consistently if you're really good with jet you could still get value with that and yeah the character's still phenomenal she's still gonna be top of the meta and yeah it doesn't look like this is gonna change with these changes it simply wasn't enough to dethrone her now next up we do got to talk about astra astra is by far the best single targeted controller and her ying to her her yang viper is the best site splitter controller is what i'm going to call her i guess she's a little bit unique in the fact that she is needed for maps that are really open maps like breeze where it's very difficult to smoke off exactly what you need to with single targeted smokes and astra is the best character when you can just use those single targeted smokes and then you just have all this access to all this insane utility the sucks the concussion the wall is amazing for post plant and that's probably the number one suggestion i would give you to use astra's wall for post plant specifically it's great you can actually set up in the corner behind the wall to where enemies literally can't push through it because you're body blocking them and yeah it's something that a lot of players did at the masters event and it's very great i do think that learning astra and viper basically perfectly fill the controller category viper's an amazing character on the majority of maps though and if you learn lineups you can definitely get a lot of value and carry on her as well i do think that those four characters silver jet astra and viper are the meta defining and the characters that are really pushing how you play the game and if you're gonna pick any other character which i think you can you could pick any of the a through d characters and be perfectly fine think about your matchups against jet silver astron viper think about what you're going to be doing how you're going to be playing how to play against them and that is how you succeed in this meta because you need to have a plan if you don't have a plan to fight against those then you're going to be completely lost you're going to get sucked by astro you're going to get recon dart you're going to get killed so practice your flicks on recon dart learn where they're going to land Figure out exactly how Jet's going to take a site, where they're going to dash, how can you punish it with your utility set depending on the character you play. How do you push through Viper utility? How do you bait it out? What can you do to play in and out of a Viper's pit? What does a Viper not want you to do? How can you punish her for using lineups and things like that? This is the type of stuff you should be thinking about if you want to succeed. And if you want more about that, I can definitely do an in-depth breakdown about that later on. Just let me know down below. And of course, if you want to master any of these agents, go to the Game Leap website down below for in-depth tips and tricks, VOD reviews, and much, much more. We got everything you could possibly need to dominate patch 3.07. So go check it out right now. But thank you so much for coming by. Hope you enjoyed the video. I love you faces and i'll see you next time